Hi, everyone. Welcome to this CUBE's coverage of WINS 2022. I'm Lisa Martin, very happy to be covering this conference. I've got Vidya Settler here with me, the director of Tableau Research. Vidya, welcome to the program. Thanks, Lisa. It's great to be here. So this is one of my favorite events. You're a keynote this year. What are so You're going to be talking about what makes intelligent visual analytics tools really intelligent. Talk to me a little bit about some of the key takeaways that the audience is going to glean from your conversation. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we've reached a point where everybody understands that data is important. Um, trying to understand that data is equally important. And we're also getting to that point where technology and AI is really picking up. Algorithms are getting better, computers are getting faster. And so there's a lot of dialogue and conversation around how AI can help with visual analysis um, to make our jobs easier, uh, help us glean insights. So I thought it was a really timely um, point where we can really actually talk about it. And Kind of distilling into the specifics of how these tools can actually be intelligent beyond just the general buzz of AI. And that's a great point that you bring up. You know, there is there's been a lot of buzz around AI for a long time. The organizations talk about it, yeah. software vendors talk about it being you know integrated into their technologies. But how can AI really help to make visual analytics in, in, interpretable in a way that makes sense for the, the the data enthusiasts and the business? Yeah. So. To me, I think my point of view, um, which tends to be kind of the general agreement among the research community is AI um, is getting better. And there are certain types of algorithms, especially these repetitive tasks. You know, we, we see this with even Instagram, right? I mean, you, you, you put a picture on Instagram, there are filters that can maybe make the image look better, um, some fun backgrounds and those, in, you know, generally speaking, are AI algorithms at work. So there are these kind of simple, um, either fun ways or tasks that reduce friction where AI can play a role. And they tend to be really good with these repetitive tasks, right? I mean, if I had to upload a picture and constantly edit the background manually, that's a pain. So AI algorithms are really good at figuring out where people tend to do a particular task often, and that's a good place for these algorithms to come into play. But that being said, I think fundamentally speaking, there are going to be tasks where AI can't simply replace a human. Um, humans have a really strong visual system. We have a very highly cognitive system uh, where we can glean insights and takeaways beyond just the pixels or just the text. And so how do we actually design systems where algorithms augment a human, where a human can kind of stay in the driver's seat, stay creative, but kind of defer all these mundane or repetitive tasks that simply add friction to the computer. And that's, that's what the keynote is about. And talk to me about when you're talking with with organizations, where are they in terms of appetite to understand the benefits that natural language processing, AI and humans together can have on visual analytics and being able to interpret that data? Yeah, so I would say it's really moving fast. So three years ago, organizations were, were like, you know, AI, it's a great buzzword. We're weary because when rubber hits the road, it's really hard to take that into action. But now we're slowly seeing places where it can actually work. So organizations are really thirsty to figure out how do we actually add customer value? How do we actually build products where AI can move from a simple, cute proof of concept working in a lab to actual production? And that, that is where organizations are right now. And we've already seen that with various types of examples like machine translation. You open up a Google page in Spanish and you can hit auto translate and it'll convert it into English. Now, is it perfect? Not, but is it good enough? Yes. And I think that's where um, AI algorithms are heading and organizations are really trying to figure out what's in it for us and what's in it for our customers. What are some of the, the cultural, anytime we talk about AI, we always talk about ethics, but what are some mm -hmm. of the cultural uh, or the language specific challenges 
with respect to natural language techniques that organizations need to be aware of? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's a common question and really important. So as I've said, these AI algorithms are only as good as the data that they are often trained on. And so it's really important in addition to the culture, cultural aspects of incorporating those into the techniques is to really figure out what sort of biases come into play, right? So a simple example is there's sarcasm in language and different cultures have different ways of interpreting it. There are subtleties in language, you know, jokes. Um, you know, my kids have a certain type of language when they're talking with each other that I may not understand. So there's a whole complexity around cultural appropriation, generations that where language constantly evolves, as well as biases. Um, for example, we've had you know uh, conversations in the news where AI algorithms are trained on a particular data set um, for detecting crime, and uh, there are hidden biases that go into play with that sort of data. So we're really it's important to be acknowledged of like where the data is and what sorts of cultural biases come into play. But translation, simple language translation is already more or less a solved problem. Um, but beyond the simple language translation, we also have to account for uh, language subtleties as well. Right, and the subtleties can be, I mean, very dramatically. How do you, when you're talking with organizations that are really looking to to become data-driven. Everybody talks about being data-driven and we hear it on the news all the time, it's mainstream, but what that actually really means and how an organization actually delivers on that are kind of two different things. When yeah. you're talking with customers that are, you know, okay, we've got to talk about ethics. We know that there's biases and data. How do you help them get around that so that they can actually adopt that technology and make it useful and impactful to the business? Yeah. So. Just as important as figuring out how AI algorithms can help an organization's business, it's equally important for an organization to be more data literate about the data that feeds into these algorithms. So making data as a first class citizen and figuring out are there hidden biases? Is, is the data comprehensive enough? Acknowledging where there are limitations in the data and being completely transparent about that. and Sharing that with customers, I think, is really key. And coming back to you know, humans being in the driver's seat, if these experiences are designed where humans are, in fact, in the driver's seat, as a human, they can intervene and correct and repair the system if they do see certain types of oddities that come into play with these algorithms. I'm going to ask you in our final few minutes here, were you? I know that you have a PhD in computer graphics from uh, Northwestern, is it? Yep. Northwestern. Cats. Yep. Were you always interested in STEM and data? How, talk to me a little bit about your background. Yeah. Um, I grew up in a family full of academics and female academics. Um, and now, yes, I have uh, boys, including my dog. I mean, everybody's male, but I have a really strong vested interest in supporting women in STEM. And I actually would go further and say STEAM. I think Arts and science are both equally important. Um, in fact, I would say that on our research team, there's a good representation of minorities and women. Um, and data analysis and visual analysis in particular is a field that is very conducive uh, for women in the field because women are naturally, tend to be naturally meticulous. Um, they're very good at distilling uh, what they're seeing. So, I would argue that there are a host of disciplines in this space that make it equally exciting and conducive for women to jump in. I'm glad that you said that. That's actually quite exciting. That's a that's a real positive um, thing that's going on in, in the industry and what you're seeing. So I'm looking forward to your keynote and I'm sure the audience is as well. Vidya, it was a pleasure to have you on the program talking about intelligent visual analytics tools and the opportunities that they bring to organizations. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Lisa. For Vidya Settler, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of WIDS Conference 2022. Stick around, more great content coming up next.